Hello and welcome to Tech Shorts. Today we're going to be talking about image flow. Now before we talk about image flow, we're going to talk about what a flow element is and what an image frame is. To tell the difference between the two, you can look at the very obvious sign. In the middle of the flow element, you're going to see a silhouette of a person. In the middle of the image frame, you're going to see a frame around a mountain and sun. This lets us know that that is an image frame. The flow element will also have underneath it or to the side, the student name. Now, if we click on it, like we have right here, we can also see that there is a dotted yellow line around it, which is a giveaway that this is a flow element, as well as the toolbar above it. Here in the middle, you're gonna see flow options. And we'll talk about the options here a little later. So this is the difference between a flow element. So a flow element can have a portrait flown in it using the flow feature found in the flow tab. An image frame can have an image dragged and dropped onto it. Now, sometimes when you're working on your yearbook and you move pages from last year over to this year, you may see something like this on the right. Here you have what you would think would be a flow element and you will see that there is a frame with a mountain in the sun, which tells us that these are individual photo frame. This means that these can have images dragged and drop into them. They cannot be flowed. Here on the left is a flow element, and we know this is a flow element because of the dotted yellow line around it and the silhouette of the person in the middle. This can have images flown into it. Now, to set up a flow, you can click on the boxes here. You can come up to the flow options found here in the middle and click down arrow to open up the flow options. Helpful advice, you click the thumbtack right here and you can move this screen to the side so that you can view your work. If automatic is checked, we suggest unchecking this because as you reduce the number of rows or columns, the automatic will automatically adjust the width and the height. So first we have rows and columns. This allows us to remove the number of rows left and right and remove or add the number of columns up and down. Now if we try to add more columns than we have space for, we will get a message right here letting us know that we cannot do that. We cannot add more columns than we currently have space for, nor can we add more rows that we currently have space for. Next is the portrait dimensions. Here we have the width that lets us control how wide these boxes are. And then we have the height that lets us control how tall these boxes are. With width and height, we have the same rule as the rows and columns. We cannot exceed this outside this blue box. Here we have portrait spacing. Horizontal lets us control the spacing in between the boxes. Vertical lets us control the distance between the rows. Here we have name width. You can actually shrink down the width of the names if we want to. Highly suggest just to leave this alone. Next is the portrait shape. So by default, they are squares, but if you wanted circles or diamonds, you can change the shape to any shape you want. With squares, you have the options to round off the corner. So here we can slightly round off the corner and give it a little bit of shape. For any reason, you want to change the name location. Here you have the name on left horizon, and we can change name on right horizon. And here the names have now changed location. You can also change the names to below. If you see a red X, all we have to do is come back to options, come back to vertical and increase the space. And then there's the names underneath it. Now, if you want to, you can also exclude the names from the flow. This last one is expand flow. Now we caution you in using this simply because once you've expanded the flow, this box is no longer flow, which means you cannot take your photos out of it or flow images back into it. So if you were to click to I understand and then hit expand, now you can see that they went from a flow element to image blocks, which means we can no longer use our flow option for this page. Now, once we have everything set up, we can come over here to flow. We can make sure our category is set to the teacher we want on this page. The name format is correct. The number of images are right here. This We currently have 42 images. The number of flowed images is zero. Number of 
images remaining is 42 so because we have not flowed any. We're going to set our start. This is our page start. This is where we want to start on and we want to stop on this page. So we want to start on page 18 and stop on page 18. We're going to come up and we're going to hit save and we're going to let the system know that we've made changes and we're ready to flow. Now here it's going to tell us there's 35 positions available. So what we would have to do is come back over here, come down to flow options, and we're going to have to add another row. We can hit save and here we go. We have 42 available positions. And before we flow, we can also make any further adjustments such as let's we want to add a stroke around all the boxes. Here we see the names are in black and we have a dark background. If we want to see what this is going to look like before we hit flow, save our options and we're going to go over here to print preview. Here we can kind of see the names but they are on a dark background. Here at the bottom we definitely cannot see the names because of the different color. We can also see that these names are also on a dark background. So if we want to change the color of the names we can click on the box. We can come over here to color and we can find a color such as this one right here. Once we're done we can hit save. We can come on down here to flow and we can click on flow. Here we have the images float on the page and we want to look at this page to see what it looks like. We can go back up to print preview. Here we can look at the page and see how everything looks. If we're still not happy with the names right here we can always go back and we can reset the flow click on here and we can find another coloring that we want to use uh, we can click on a dark color and then we could come over here to a shape color put that shape color here stretch that shape color down then we could come over here to format and effects rotate the corner just a little bit lower the transparency then we could come over here to arrange and we can send backward then when we flow the students out again and here we can see the names are slightly better. So adding a background like that can help your names pop a little bit more now that we have this the way we like it and we want this setup over here. To do that we would have to delete everything over here, select this flow element, come up here to the toolbar that opened up when we did and we're going to hit duplicate. As you can see it duplicated the boxes and we can click and hold this and drag them over here. The names are on the left side and we want to change that. So remember we can go up to flow options, name options, and then we select name on right horizontal. The names have now changed position and we can now flow into this flow element. Now we can flow the same class on two different pages. We simply come over here to the class and we will select start on page 20, stop on page 21. We will hit our save. We will see that we have 34 images. 34 images remain because we have not flowed any and we have 56 available position. We can hit flow and here we have the same class float on two different pages. Now for some reason if you have a student to show up later in the year that is assigned to this class and you need to put them in there, all you have to do is reset. Now you'll see that it remains the same. Now we need to bring a box back. The boxes did not disappear. They are simply hidden. So if we double click, we can see that these boxes are turned off. These are boxes are turned on. If I click this eye, I turn the box off. If I click the box eye again, the box is turned back on. So all we have to do is come over here and turn the box on. Once we have the box turned on, we can simply click to the side, reflow the class, and the student will be right there. Now you can return all the boxes if you want, and you can simply make an, a neat design if you want to. By clicking on this box, we can turn these three boxes off, come over here, turn these boxes on. So here we made a pattern. We come up here to hit save and it will say we have 40 port positions. So here we made a pattern and if we flow into it, you will see that some slight changes need to be made. Maybe we need to get rid of these four on the bottom so we can reset. Double click on these, hide these four boxes, bring back four boxes and then we can reflow. So here we created a nice pattern. Now you can also crop some of these images. If you bring down a ruler, and you want to make sure that everyone's head is on the same level. Here you will see that some are not. So if you want to bring this student's uh, photo leveled with everyone else, you can double click on it. Here you will see the crop sign right here. You can click on the crop sign and you can bring this image up a little bit, move it over just a little bit, click to the side of it 
and then click to the side again. And here you can see that we've brought his head same level as everyone else. And I'd like to remind you that you can flow and then reset as many times as you want until you get the right uh, look for your yearbook. And this is how to do a portrait flow. Thank you for watching.